Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about the question of whether or not trans women are women, and whether or not trans men are men. I see on the internet a lot, a lot of different perspectives on this. And in general, in more liberal and trans-friendly circles, I see the assertion made over and over again, uh, trans women are women, trans men are men, bam, end of story. And in more conservative and generally transphobic circles, I see the statement made, trans women are not women, they are really just men, and that's just the way it is, and trans men are just women, and that's just the way it is. Personally, I do not hold any of these viewpoints. I think that the answer to the question of whether or not trans women are women, and whether or not trans men are men, is it depends. It depends on what definition of women and what definition of men you're using. I want to make clear that I am trans myself. I identify as non-binary. I don't identify as a woman or a man. And I said I identify as, I didn't say I am. Part of the reason for this is that I don't think of gender as an objective thing that has a single definition. I think gender is really complicated. When it comes to gender, there is the question of a person's biology, which is sometimes complicated itself. Uh, it's not just a question of chromosomes. Like a lot of people say, oh, there's chromosomes, there's anatomy, genitalia, all that. There's secondary sex characteristics. Usually those things line up, not always. Um, there's intersex people, there are other ways in which those things don't line up. Like if a person goes through hormone therapy, they might have secondary sex characteristics which don't match their reproductive tract and their chromosomes and things like that. So even the biology can get complicated. But when it comes to the social side of gender, it's even more complicated. Like when you walk down the street and you see people, and you're like categorizing them in your head, and you're like, oh, that's a man, that's a woman, you don't really know that person's biology. You are making a conscious decision to gender that person. So you have the, this idea of their gender in your head, and it's really an idea that lives in your head. For a lot of people, it might match their biology, and it might match their gender identity, but it might be disjoint from those things. So there's this idea of like, gender identity, which is a person's internal sense of gender. There's the idea of biology, what the person's biology is, there is this thing of externally gendering people, like people's perception of you, and people's perception of other people. And then there are all these cultural constructs of masculinity and femininity, all the statements that people make about women and men. Like, if I read an article, and it's like, oh, like, men think like this, and women think like this, blah blah blah, a lot of the times it's just complete and utter bullshit. Uh, but when there are articles like that, a lot of times I read them, and I'm like, hmm, well, this is describing, the way it's describing it, I fit the woman description in this article, I don't fit the men one at all. And then I might read another article, and I'm like, wow, I really fit the men one in this article, and not the woman one. So this is another concept of woman and man. Trans people typically bridge these gaps. The definition of trans that's accepted by most organizations now uh, is if your gender identity does not match your assigned birth sex. It doesn't, doesn't depend on whether or not you want to go on hormone therapy, it doesn't depend on whether or not you want to undergo surgery. You're trans if your identity doesn't match your assigned birth sex. But, like, does that mean that you really are a woman, that you really are a man, if that's what your identity is? I personally, for myself, I don't want to make that claim, because I think that that clouds the understanding. Like, I want other people to understand the distinction between all these things. I want them to know I am assigned male at birth. I want them to know I don't identify as male. And I want them to know that people usually gender me male, but, but sometimes, depending on how I'm dressed, depending on the context, sometimes people gender me female. Uh, there are other people that have different experiences of these things. Also in terms of fitting the stereotypes, I have a pretty strong disconnect between st cultural stereotypes and gender roles of men. So if you look at like the 
the cultural norms of men and women, I'm all over the map, and I'm somewhere in the middle, on average. So, I hope this has clarified some things, and um, I, I understand like trans people want support, they want validation for their identities, I think it's good sometimes to like, the whole like, trans women are really women, trans men are men, it's good for achieving that, I don't necessarily think that it's good for communicating all these nuances. So I'd like us to move beyond that a little bit, and to acknowledge the subjectivity of gender. I think that the subjectivity of gender is a really beautiful thing, and that understanding it is really important for supporting trans people. Yeah, thank you.